Hey, this is Joe with Personas. I'm going to show you how to get that reverb sound in Studio One. And no, it doesn't require you to purchase any third-party fancy-schmancy reverb plugins. You can do that within Studio One. Let's dive in. All right, so here are the background vocals to that song. It gets progressively more ridiculous as the song ends, uh, but I'll play you the first part that's a little simpler so you can hear what the raw tracks sound like, and raw meaning raw plus some EQ. So here's what they sound like. So a good bit of EQ helps to clean it up so it's nice and bright and crisp, so on top of all the other instruments it's not creating any mud. But that's not the point of this video. It sounds, I mean, you could leave it like that and be fine, right? That that's a, that's a thing, it would accomplish that kind of pad sound that I wanted to accomplish that I recorded a thousand different vocal tracks to do. However, a couple things. One, I love the sound of reverb when done well, and two, reverb has made a huge comeback in the last, I'd say, decade or so. Um, where you'll hear lots of songs on the radio with lots of reverb and delay and other things in them. And here's a way to do that. And also a way to protect yourself from ruining the mix with reverb, because that's really possible too. So what is my go-to? You believe it or not, it is a little plug-in here called Room Reverb in Studio One. That's it. So oh, go over to Room Reverb in your plug-in list, and you get there by pressing F7. And then click on the little drop down menu and scroll until you find, we'll look under send effects, until you find one called flat plate. That's the one we're looking for. So if we zoom back out, if I drag flat plate onto my background vocal bus, so all the background vocals are going through this one bus here, then Studio One does its thing. It creates the reverb send, which shows up over here. We'll color this one white just so we can see it easily. That's not white. That's that's not why the okay that's fine. Uh, it's this gray one over here on the far right side. And these, let me zoom in so you can see it. These are the settings of that flat plate preset. So if you're familiar with reverbs, there are room reverbs. There's cathedrals. There's halls. There's rooms. There's booths. Like they, lots of different sizes. You can see there's several types here. And for this preset, we're actually using the room type here. You don't have to know what any of these settings do. The only ones I focus on are these right up here, specifically this length one. Um, and what's happening here, if you, if you know reverbs, you might notice that, first of all, this mix knob is all the way up. There's two mix knobs in a reverb. There's this one, which is the global wet dry mix, which when we set it up as a send, we use, it's 100% uh, on the wet side. So all we hear is reverb on this reverb channel. But this is the mix between the pre-delay and the decay. So pre-delay is the sound of the, the early reflections, not pre-delay, sorry, it's the sound of the early reflections versus the decay of the room. So those are two different sounds. The early reflections give us the sense of how big or kind of what shape and size the room is, and then the delay, the decay time, is kind of how the sound builds and then delay decays over time. And you'll notice with this plate, first of all, it's essentially set up the room to be this one meter wide room which looks a lot like what? A plate. So if you're not familiar, plate reverbs are a thing where it's a big metal plate, they run sound through it, so they they wire sound into it on one side and then they pick it up on the other side and it's this cool kind of, kind of bright sounding reverb tone that has been used for years and years and years. Um, but the way, the way the folks at Personas, the software team, created a plate reverb was to literally just create a room that's really, really, really small and narrow and then run sound into it. And the one thing they did was they made sure there's no uh, early reflections at all. So we're just hearing the decay time. All that, you don't have to understand that to know that this sound, to me, when you crank up the length up to about six seconds or so, sounds amazing. Now, you may wonder, six seconds seems really long for reverb. Isn't that wrong? It's not. Just give it a try and see. I actually first started using this because I had a reverb pedal that I bought a fairly not not expensive one and one of the in the manual it said turn the reverb all the way up 
and it creates this almost infinite reverb sound. So when you play a note, it takes forever to decay. And I found that I loved that sound for certain things, and I came into Studio One and said, okay, is there a way I can kind of replicate that? I found this flat plate, I cranked up the length setting, and it sounded incredible. Now, you can go even longer, but usually I think I'm starting around the six, seven second range. So here, with just that reverb plug-in, uh, I'm going to let you hear what it sounds like. We'll start without the reverb, and then I'll turn it on. So you don't notice that it's this big, huge, long tail until we stop. But what it ends up doing is it obviously creates a sense of space, but it also kind of glues everything together, and it makes it sound like there are more voices than there are actually in the mix. So the first part was obviously dry, but it also sounded like about six or eight voices. And then with the reverb in there, it sounds like kind of a whole ensemble. Just sounds like there's a lot more people in the room, which is really cool. Now, one of the things you're going to want to do is on your reverb channel. So over here on the right-hand side, I recommend always, always, always put a pro EQ after the reverb and just roll off everything below like two, three, four hundred hertz. Because reverbs have a way of, even if you send them nice, clean audio, sometimes the way they work, they can create muddiness in your mix and you never... I, only time I can think of wanting the big low end in my reverb is if I've got like an orchestra and I'm trying to make sure the like the big contrabasses are resonating in the room. But that's a v one specific use case. Otherwise, I want to have this shape reverb or this shape EQ following my reverb so that there's no accidental muddiness that comes through. Now, on this particular example, you don't hear it much, but just trust me, this will help keep the reverb out of the way of everything else in the mix so it sits up in the higher frequencies, doesn't mess with anything going on in the low mids or the mid range. <laughs> And that's it. So if you want to save this as a preset and effects chain or save it as a part of your template, let me review one more time. It's really simple. I, I was going to save this as a preset for you to download, but it's literally baked into Studio One. Open up Room Reverb, go to the Flat Plate preset, set the length to about seven and a half seconds, and make sure the mix knob is up at 100. It's locked here in Studio One by default. Um, and then afterwards, put a high-pass filter rolling off everything below like 350, 400 hertz, and you're good to go. Start applying this to different tracks in your mix. And you may think, okay, but I don't want that much reverb. It's really not that much once you hear it in context of the whole mix. It's all in my head, and I'm not falling over the In fact, I've got a lot going on. You can actually put it on the lead vocal as well. If I were to use this on the lead vocal, I would put... The same reverb a lot of times, not every time, but the same reverb, just not quite as much. So here's that lead vocal. It's all in my head. That's too much. Like that would sound weird even in the mix. But if we just bring it down about halfway and we just let it just a kiss of the reverb on there. It's all in my head. Maybe a little more. And I'm not falling over the edge. The difference between the dry vocal up front and that kind of just, it's almost like a pad sound that it creates deep in the background can be really effective. It's all in my head. And I'm not falling over the edge. Could you catch me? So there, great example, when you're doing this type of stuff, what it sounds like by itself is fairly irrelevant compared to how it sounds in the mix. So there, when I turn the mix back on, the vocal, I didn't hear the reverb really at all. So I just reached for the send knob or slider, cranked it up until it was too much, and then pulled it back until I could just kind of hear it. That's you don't always want things to be subtle like that, but this is an example where subtlety is your friend. All right, that's it. Go try this on a mix. Throw it on anything. It's fun to try this stuff on, on things you wouldn't think sound good with reverb and see if there's some magical combination that creates a great new tone that gets you excited and makes you make a masterpiece. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.